Okay guys, welcome. This is the one you've been waiting for, a lot of you. I've had so many messages over the last month about this rig, the running up and over rig. What's the difference between the running up and over and an up and over rig? I'm here today to show you out. Okay, so a lot of you guys would have watched the European Open Christmas special and would have seen me the raise I had on there using the rig. Um, it's a rig I've used for many years and I've had some fantastic fish over the years with it. It's a rig I like to use because it doesn't spook the fish. Um, it allows the fish to take the bait back and then move off and then let the rig do its thing and set the hook. It acts similar to a bolt rig where the bolt rig, obviously what we use for gill heads and stuff like that where the fish can pick up and go and then the lead picks up and, and basically sets the hook as the fish goes off and then your ratchets go off, screaming fish on the end of it, fingers crossed. So that's the rig I'm going to show you what today, I'm going to show you how to put together and um, before that hints and tips as always. So. One of the most important things with my type of fishing and, and being able to catch fish is having everything ready and being prepared as we talked about with the rig bits and pieces in the uh, pulley drop down video. Well, I'm here to talk about storage, okay? You need to make sure you've got your rigs looked. There's no point to chuck them into bags and boxes like that and have them all tangled up and that. You need to be looking after them. I like to use these Tronics Pro um, rig winders. They've got the inserts there. You can buy them with inserts or without. I've actually bought a few without recently because I've bought the boxes and I've had the boxes and I've got all my bits and pieces in the boxes. I've actually renewed my boxes because they were getting old and stuff. And um, I like to store them like that. So I'll have one with Brum Brum Ray, I'll have Soul Rigs, I'll have Smooth Arm Rigs, I'll have Gilt Ed Rigs, Flounder Rigs, you name it, I've got different rigs from it. Um, and exactly the same with like Bream Rigs and stuff like that. And I'll have rigs made up, sometimes the same rig for the same species but in different lengths. So if I, the tide is running really hard, I'll shorten the length up. When the tide eases off, I'll use a different. And then, and then when the tide's fully off and there's no tide at all, I'll use a really long flowing tray, you know what I mean? And that's how I like to fish. And it's thinking outside the box sometimes, guys, into catching fish. I mean, if you're getting bites and they're not taken, there's a reason why. And one of the reasons why it could be getting spooked because you're led and they're going, they, they're not hitting the bait hard, they're mucking around with the bait and now they're feeling tension and they're, they're not going. Where you change a, the change of rig sometimes will do the trick and like we found out that the day when we were fishing for the European Open Christmas special um, all the rigs all the bait all the all the fish come on that rig that day and um, there's obviously got to be a reason why and that was what I put down to the not in they're not being spooked the fish is the, the hooks right back its mouth by the time it's take just taken off and that's the reason why so for a fiver or six quid you can use different ones of these as I said if, if I if I get home from work one day and I want to go fishing Adam rings me up and says, Adam, do you fancy a bit of fishing tonight? I was like, yeah, go on, mate, where should we go? So we have a look at the tide, and oh, we'll go and do a bit of ray fishing. I know full well Adam's going to have his gear ready. You know what I mean? He's, he's going to have, have, have that already. Where I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I haven't got stuff ready, I'm going to be like, oh, God, go on and make some rigs. By the time I go and make some rigs, it's like gone up for can't go fishing, mate. I'm going to have to get make rigs, though. Maybe do it tomorrow night. And then you're in the same position. Everything's ready. We're in a lockdown at the moment. It's, it's a prime time to get everything ready for those months when you want to be out, okay? So. That it's, it's, it's there. If you're sitting down of an evening watching a bit of telly, make a few rigs up, get them all set down. You can Adam uses the rig wallets, but I like to use these. They're, they're perfect, guys, because you can just write what they are, put them on the shelf. When it's time to go fishing, you come in after work, right, bang, I need that. Boom, bang, I need a headlight. Bang, I need a flask. Bit of bait. You're out the door with your leads. You're on your way to your fishing mark. You're fishing within an hour, half hour, depending on where you're going, you know what I mean? Where... Uh, You've got to go home and sit down for an hour and a half, two hours, putting line on your reels or making rigs up and that. It's it's a no-brainer. It's being being ready and being prepared. That is what will catch your fish. Okay, so that there we go over there until the end. So the running up and over rig. We'll, we'll get to it. So basically, what I'm going to be using is um, the uh, rig body. So I've got the Rovex and I've actually got the uh, hundred pounds on there at the minute. So I've got 100 pound Rovex, um, 10 times he extra heavy duty as a rig body. I'm going to put a swivel on the end of that. So I've got Cox and Raw, and that's a 320 pound swivel. The reason I'm using these heavy duty ones on that, this is the rig, I'm, the rigs I'll be making um, over the next couple of days and putting back ready for those big blondes. And um, these are the rigs I use, you know what I mean, for the ray fishing. At the end of the day, you've got a chance of maybe a 30 pound plus blonde ray being on the end of your line. You want to make sure everything is, is, is up to the job, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's right. So I've got, it's weird because normally you'd have an imp there, wouldn't you, on the start of the rig, you're not, you've got a swivel. So on that now, I'm going to have a bead, okay? 
So your B goes down a line. So you've got, got your trace, your rig body. You've got a B. Uh, you've got a, a swivel. You've got a B. Okay, coming down over the top of that. Next step, then you've got a bigger swivel, a uh, bigger um, B, bigger swivel, bigger bead, ready to go over the top. Then you could put your imp if you wanted to. I don't. All right, I'll put a, a swivel, a swivel clip. Okay, and um, it's a swivel link basically. It hasn't got the clip attached like that. It just helps you put that on, and then obviously everything's nicely flowing. Um, and then what I'll do on top of that then is I'll put the other side, the other bead, the bigger bead, and that will go the other side of that. Then I'll finish that off with the other rubber bead on the end, which will take the clip on the top. So you've got the bent link clip, which will obviously take you up and over on the top of that then, okay? So we'll set that up. Tie the knots, same knot as always, as I always think. Bring your line back over with your clip. Bring your line rounds, so your finger is in, in between. You go once, twice, three times, four times. Bring it down through the hole. And when you bring that down through the hole, you would have created a hole again there to come back up, okay? Sliver, I'll get the knot puller there now. All right, so I'm gonna pull that down. Pull that really hard. Sometimes it's nice to give it a little gentle tug, so it just like pull you, you pull it right down, like you know what I'm saying. That's nice. So that's that. That's that, that's that done basically. Then I'll snip that off. As so, so that there is basically your rig body. Okay. What I'm going to do then is on the link swivel link, I'm going to put an imp. Okay. So I've got the imp on there now, and that was what will clip it, everything down. Then I'm going to put on the lead now, just to show you something. So, I've got my lead there now, okay? That's out on the seabed, come down to the bottom. My hook's flundering away with a bait on in the tide. Fish picks it up. So what will happen is this, the fish will pull like that, the lead will come up, as you can see there now. When it gets that stage, that's connected to my line, ratchet starts to rip off. That gets pulled from the ground, which sets the hook in the fish, and the fish is off running. It's running up and over, guys. Um, it's got all that room there to play around with the with the bait without any tension on. You know what I mean? Before that hook, does, that that weight does its thing. The grip lead obviously does its thing and gets pulled from the seabed and hopefully sets a hook. I mean, that is a lovely rig. It really is. You can use this rig for lots of different types of fishing and. Um, one of, one of the species it's really good for is cod fishing. Now cod can be a nightmare sometimes when you first start out. You're looking at the rod, you get those slack liners. Nine times out of ten, the line will go slack and then it just drops to the shingle. And um, every now and again you'll get one that picks, picks a, it'll go slack line and pick it up and then take off and you know you've got a good one. Where this rig here, it helps to keep the hook deep. So by the time the fish is hooked, it's right back its mouth, you know what I mean? And it's set deep, so when that hook point comes, it's, it's, it's got a good chance it's going to hook straight into the fish. Where sometimes, because big, cods, big cod and, and cod have got massive mouths anyway, even the smaller cod, they've got big mouths. And if you've got a, if the hook, sometimes we'll, you get the bite and the hook comes straight right out of his mouth, you know what I mean? Because it hasn't hooked. With this, it will stay deep. It's, it really is a good rig for, um, for targeting cod. Uh, you can use it for targeting gilt heads be a fantastic rig for gilt heads uh, it acts exactly the same way as a boat rig you know what I mean got the trace line a bit, a bit different I keep them shorter to the bottom though if I was targeting gilts I'd rather use a boat rig than use this one if I'm if I'm fair um, but you could, if you had to cast anywhere you had to cast to to get gilts I mean you know I mean you should be fishing and you had to get somewhere like 100 yards out in the middle of the estuary or something like that this would be perfect way because it would you know, it enable you to clip your bait down and get it out there you know what I'm saying so that is basically the start of the rig. It's the main rig body itself. So what we'll do now is we'll go over to the trace line and setting it all up. So what I've got here now is I've got 80 pound asso. I'm gonna put, tie that 80 pound asso on this. Round two, three, four, into that. Back in and around, pull it up, slide out, pull tight, job done. Cut off the tag end as so. Now it's time to set the rig, okay? So I'm gonna pull that all the way up. And you can see this now. The good thing about this rig, you can you can make it long, and if you want to shorten the rig up during the session, 
you just cut the, the off by the swivel and retie it to whatever line because you, you've got all that room there you know what I'm saying when you've got the lead so I'm going to go up for the top now I'm going to pull it up slightly so I've come up about 15 mil and I'm going to come down there to the imp now to set it and that's it it's ready to go I'm going to take that over for that there now cut it off job done that's the trace so on this one here because I'm using the I'm targeting bronze I've got a 7 -0 Uptide Extra as my main hook, a 60 Octopus as my uh, panel, and then I've got a rubber bead which I'll put in the, in the middle. Okay, some of the guys will watch the pulley rig and the pulley drop down um, demonstration I've done will know why. I'll explain again. So I'm going to put that down through the eye of the octopus hook, as so, and then I'm going to put this rubber bead. All right, we'll talk about the rubber bead in a minute and the reasons why. I've put that there. Then I'm going to go for the 7-0 uptight extra, as so, okay. I'm going to come around like that, like so. Same knot as always, guys. I'm going to come up with the trace line, create the upper loop, and then I'm going to come down like that, like that, pull tight. Yeah, lovely, lovely. And I'm going to cut that off there then, okay? So if I can get the knot hook put that, that's nice. That's set. It's ready to go, guys. Ready to go, okay? So this is the reason why. So that little rubber bead there will cushion the knot from below, okay? So nine times out of ten, as we've talked about this before, if that fish picks up that hook, especially with ray fishing, nine times out of ten, it will pick the panel hook up just by where they attack the bait. And um, as that comes down, and if that goes onto that, that there is onto the knot. So if that damaged that knot at all, and that knot undone, that hook would fall off and that hook would just go out and the fish would be off to fight another day with someone else, you know what I mean? You wanna get that fish to the shoreline. And keeping your knots, it's always important to look after and make sure your knots are prepared correctly, they're strong and they're looked after. And that is a that's a possibility that could damage that there with that rubber bead there that's not damaging nothing yes I'm, by doing so you have to bait up in a different manner i've had to do so over the years um because obviously when you're using sand deal many years ago what i used to like to do is head and tail it and go in the sand deal the way i used to put the sand deal you didn't see no trace line at all and then i'd set my top hook into the into the tail end of the sand deal then and everything all that both hooks were in the sand deal you would never see it all you've seen is hook points come out of it and that's the way i used to like i always prepare my baits I've, no matter what i'm doing all the hook point even the top hooks are always in the bait so nothing can be seen unless i'm targeting smooth hound um and taupe uh and spurs and stuff like that but nine times same ray fishing especially everything's covered and um yeah it's important so what, what with the sand deal what i'll do now is i'll get the sand deal i'll cut it all the way down through I'll insert that with the bead, bait elastic all the way around up the top, you can't even see that, then I'll set my other top up accordingly. Okay, so that's the reason we do that. And then what I'm gonna do now is set the rig. So I've got the, tr got the top end of the rig there like so. I'll bring it up over, over with the up and over part, and then I'll bring it right down to the imp, which is connected, and that is ready for casting. I mean, I hope a lot of you guys will have been after this rig. Go out and use it and find yourself some fish because it really is a very good rig to be using, especially if you're out cod fishing now um, on your local beaches and stuff like that. For those who can get out and can fish local and stuff, it's a very good rig to use for cod fishing. And um, if you're missing bites and stuff like that, give it a go because you never know, you never know. But ray fishing especially, it's one of my favourite rigs. Um, and on times where everybody else could be using different rigs and you could put that on, it could see that winning fish. But that is the running up and over rig, guys, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed it. Try it at home. As I said, I've used the components, what I like to use for targeting the fish I do. You can use different components, different traces and stuff like that. That's down to you. Um, but I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Give us a like. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hopefully pop over to the Facebook page and say hello and uh, we'll have a chat on there. But till the next time.